Jerry sent me an email, it was pretty short, uh, and not just Jerry, it's actually quite a bit of other people, Mark did as well, and a few other people. How can we get the Prime Minister held accountable once more since Parliament is not sitting? So Parliament is officially suspended until uh, the middle of September when we we'll normally reconvene. And we've been having these special committee seat, sit, sittings, which is why I'm in Ottawa, which is why I'm doing this town hall now. Um, and the special committee is in a hybrid setting where some people are in the chamber in Parliament and some people are uh, being tuned in through Zoom uh, on uh, giant screens in the Parliament building. So I, what I want to do first is show you one of the ways that we keep the government accountable is by asking questions and then correcting the record. So I want you to listen to an MP for Edmonton West, Kelly McCauley, correcting the health minister after she provides false information to a committee of parliament. So let's tune into that one. Uh, well, I can't speak to the five years pre prior to, to our government where, in fact, under the Harper Conservatives, you know, the agencies uh, experienced significant cuts. But I can tell you that uh, during the five years that we were in government, in fact, we increased funding to Public Health Agency of Canada. Um, in 2014-15, the funding was $637 million. We increased that funding by 6%. In 2018-19, PHAC's funding was $675.4 million. Minister, I just want to start with your comment about uh, blaming the, uh, the Harper Conservatives. First of all, I want to say how disappointed I am that instead of dealing with this very important situation, that you use that disgraceful fallback line. I have the public accounts with me because I keep them everywhere I go. And in fact, since the Liberal government came into power, the first year in power, you cut PHAC funding 10%, then 13%, overall drop of 5%. Public or health ministry in total was slashed 12% since our Harper years. So I would ask that you would actually focus on providing true answers. So there you have kind of the exchange between a conservative MP of the opposition and a liberal minister. So I hear this a lot from a lot of people. They say, well, Tom, you parliamentarians, you MPs, all you do is talk. You don't do anything. And it, it's a common thread that I hear. It's a common narrative. A lot of the job of a member of parliament is, in fact, talking. A parliament comes from an old French term. Uh, which exactly, it, when you transliterate it, the literal interpretation of it is to talk in a group, to talk in a big setting. Um, what the government did when it basically shut down, suspended parliament was it took away our abilities to have votes. We call those uh, opposition supply days. Uh, they took away our ability to call for emergency debates. They could, took away our ability to table private members bills. They took away our ability to force the publication of government documents through order paper questions, basically written, very technical questions that we do. And they've limited them to two sittings in July, two sittings in August. Sittings are basically days when parliament will meet, they can table let, let new legislation. And that legislation, uh, they will need unanimous consent if they want to pass it all in one day. Obviously, that's something that's highly unlikely to happen. Uh, we're not going to concede anything to them at this point because we don't trust them and neither should anybody else. And they're going to be running about a $300 billion deficit this year. Next week, uh, we're going to be having an accountability session. So on June 17th, there'll be an accountability session on the estimates. So four hours of very, very technical questions will be asked of liberal ministers to get answers from them. Now, you know, there are things that happen. Infrastructure minister claims that privacy, she's hiding uh, 20,000 missing projects, which is tens of billions of dollars. She's hiding them from the PBO and the Auditor General. Uh, the federal government has sole sourced a $105 million contract for two new private challenger executive jets from Bombardier, something I called, called them out for on June 8th in the chamber as well. And there are currently no votes. So that's one of the fundamental jobs of a member of parliament is to debate an issue and then vote. And votes give direction to the public service and the government what to do. So how are we keeping them accountable? We have nine uh, committees of the House of Commons meeting right now. We're extracting answers out of them and we're putting pressure on the government by releasing this information to the public in order to get change done. So the new legislation that's coming in will obviously in be influenced and changed by the things that we discovered through this debate process, which is how we get to things. And as opposition members, we don't have the authority to tell the public service what to do. That's what the government is for. Our jobs are to critique, 
criticize, question, counter, and push back against the liberal narrative and make sure that uh, we keep them honest in what they do. And it is an incredibly difficult job.